Good morning, everyone. Today, I want to bring to you the new parameter database. And what it is, is um, a database that runs on OpenInverter.org and it holds the parameters that you customize your inverter with. And because it's so many, like 70 parameters, um, people kind of run into trouble to, to find the right values for each of them. But for each um, distinct hardware and for each tuning goal, there is pretty much like one set of valid parameters. And that's what we're trying to manifest in that database. So, here's how it works. I'll show you my test setup. We have here a PC. And we have here an inverter board that would normally be buried in your car. Now, to be able to um, to kind of speak to both the database and the inverter board, we need two network connections. One network connection, like via the integrated Wi-Fi to the inverter board, and the other connection in this case, via Ethernet goes to the internet. If you don't have Ethernet in your workshop, that's fine. Just get one of those USB Wi-Fi adapters and then you have two Wi-Fi interfaces and can log into your hotspot and also log into your inverter. Yes, um, there is other ways to do it. Uh, like if you're on a mobile, you can log into the inverter via Wi-Fi and um, log into the internet via your 4G or 5G if you're in South Korea connection. Um, you could also program the Wi-Fi module in its Wi-Fi settings to connect to your local access point. And this can also be your phone. And then you just have to figure out what um, IP address it, it received from your hotspot and then kind of browse to that address to access the Wi-Fi interface. Okay, um, I will start a screen capture and show you how things work. Now, first of all, um, here is the web interface, but we need to upgrade it a little bit to be able to submit parameters. And that works like so. We go to GitHub. Com. I will link this in down below to the web interface project. And um, it's it turned out easiest to just download the entire um, repository because downloading single files on, on some computers, especially Apple, results in uh, very weird downloads. So um, I will just unpack this on my desktop and now there's many files in there but we just need to upgrade three of them so we can close that we go to the web interface and we use the um, this portion here that's no normally used for updating the firmware of uh, the inverter can also be used for updating the the pages of this web interface itself so we go browse and we go to desktop, schreibtisch. Um, and first of all, we upgrade index HTML, upload. Then we upgrade index.js, also upload. And inverter.js, upload. And now, if we refresh, look how it looks here right now. We refresh it now. Aha. Uh -huh. And, oh yes, this is a test module. So yeah, you can see um, some changes have happened uh, right here. We have this new button here. That's obviously for submitting your parameters to the database. Uh, we have a subscription field that will be uh, uh, explained later on. And pretty much that's the only changes. 
So say you are like the chief and you have figured out um, a good parameter set in this case for a Tesla inverter. Or Tesla small drive unit. And you want to serve everyone in the community by submitting your awesome parameters to the database. All you have to do is hit this button. And that brings you to the Open Inverter Parameter Database Edition page. And first question is, do you want to create a completely, completely new parameter set? Then you just leave it at create new. Or do you want to sort of edit a parameter set you posted earlier? And that's what we want to do in this case. So um, this selection shows you, um, or maybe before, um, all parameter sets you submit are connected to your forum account, to your Open Inverter forum account. So you have to log into the forum to be able to add something here. So this list contains um, parameter sets that you posted earlier and that match the hardware variant that you're running on. Um, so this revision three. Um, I've, for example, also submitted um, parameters for my Polo, but these do not show up here because they're revision one hardware. Good. So we want to update an existing Tesla SDU parameter set. Let's take a look. And so now this is already filled out. We are running a Tesla SDU motor and inverter. Well, it's one unit, so um, we can select. It's kind of a bit of a meta info what, what are our drone wheels for our setup. And what was our tuning goal? Well, is it for track driving? Smooth, aggressive, stuff like that. And then here we can freely describe what our parameter set is trying to achieve. Mm, and stuff like that. And here, if, if we remove the text, it will show the question, um, like which throttle pod are we using? And that's just uh, to inform people what the pod parameters refer to. Okay, so now since we're editing an existing uh, parameter set, we can view the difference between the old one and what we've just submitted. And we see apparently we have changed uh, UDC norm from 360 to zero volts. And apart from that, nothing changed. Good, so now we can go update the parameters and um, yeah then they will be updated. And that's it. That's all you need to do to, to submit your parameters. Now, what if you're not chief master and you want to use an existing parameter set? Then you go to openverter.org slash parameters and you are um, prompted with a list of existing parameter sets. It's not so many, it's just some more or less dummy parameters I have uh, added. And we have search filters, which don't really make sense for three um, entries, but later on we can kind of, uh, yeah, search um, for parameter sets that actually match our hardware. <clears throat> Good. So say we want to, we have a Tesla SDU and we want to program our parameter, our inverter to work with it. Click on that. And now we have a manual way. We can download a file that just gives us a JSON file that we can then upload to the inverter. And that will give us our parameters. It's like a, a one time operation and then our inverter is programmed and that's it. But what we can also do is subscribe to the parameters. And that's with this button right here. And this gives us a token. 
Let me click on this token. It is copied to the clipboard, and that's pretty much all we need to do. And now we go back to our inverter interface and we paste the token into this field and press enter. And now it's requested the parameter set from the server and it applies it. <coughs> yes, so this all worked, everything's applied. Now, this isn't a one-time operation. Every time we refresh or we go to the inverter interface, it will display this message, checking your parameter subscription. And um, in this case, it's up to date. Now, let's check this, uh, the subscription model. <coughs> so say the master of the parameter set decides to change a parameter for better operation. Let's just make a small change. You just see them from 360 to 365 and we submit that. And we choose to replace our existing parameter set um, yeah so old value 360 new value 365 let's update okay it's been updated now let's pretend we are the subscriber of this, of this parameter set and let's refresh and see what happens Oh, parameter set updated. Apply. Hmm. Okay. And it downloads uh, the new parameters and automatically applies them to your inverter. Yes, that is um, pretty much uh, the main functionality of our new parameter database. Um, at this point, shout out to Dima Dückmann who did most of the UI that you see here. Made it look beautiful. Good, so I hope you like this video. I hope you will like the parameter database. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.